Hello and welcome to Business Television India. Deal Street is buzzing once again. IDFC Bank and Capital First have agreed to merge. I am Murli Dar Swaminathan. We have with us Mr. Rajiv Lal, Mr. Vaidyanathan. Welcome to the show. Congratulations. Okay, the first question, gentlemen, I'll take it to Rajiv. This looks simpler than the previous one and easier. Really? <laughs> <laughs> of course, much simpler, much easier. But uh, uh, how, how did you manage to strike this deal so fast within two, two and a half months after the previous one didn't go through? Actually two months, almost exactly. Almost two months. Almost exactly two months to the date. Um, it's not as if uh, I had not been thinking about uh, this possibility. Um, but uh, uh, actually this possibility could not have been actualized before. Right. Um, so there's something providential about it um, uh, because their promoter had a very large stake in the company right. and therefore even any merger or any theoretical relative valuation would not have met with RBI prescriptions on exactly. post-merger ownership norms. Right. So it was not a possibility. So it just, just happened coincidentally that um, after the exclusivity period on our previous conversation right. expired, uh, I realized that now their promoter had so Wobba Pinkers had sold down a significant share of their stake and this looked like a possibility. Right. So why not? So I called Vedya and then when one thing led to another. Who called first? I did. Okay. <laughs> but okay, let's come to Vedya. Why IDFC Bank? The truth is that uh, at the back of my mind, right from 2010 when I left ICSC Bank, was to say that uh, you know, we have to set up a private sector bank, a new private sector bank, but focused largely on consumer and retail financing. That was the only mandate with which I left the bank. Best route I thought was that not that RBI is going to give me a license here, you yeah, start one. I know. So I thought, okay, first get a stake in a NBFC, build it to some scale, and then hope someday to approach RBI to convert to a bank. This right. was the path. Right. Now, for that path, the really good news is that we got to about a say a 23,000 crore lo loan book in just such a short span and yeah. high quality, assets are good, good team, everything. So this path could have gone on for the next maybe four or five years. Exactly. But yeah. at some stage, I would have had to, to think of applying for a license. So, you know, some of these deals sometimes are providential. Such a good platform built by Rajiv, a good infrastructure and so on was just available. So I thought, okay, why wait four years? Why not just fast forward the story? Right, right. Okay, so um, that was a fantastic move, I would uh, say, because if you had waited for four or five years, I don't know how things would have become. I think NBFC space itself is kind of getting saturated, if I'm not I'm not so sure about that. I feel yeah. that we were really set for a you know, if you see the track record for seven years, it's a CAGR of 27% growth, a profit CAGR of 40%. Uh, the core building blocks are too good at, at Capital First. So I have no doubt in my mind, had I carried the story for the next five years, this, this, this profit sort of compounded pretty strong for the next five years. There's no problem. It's just that when do you time, you really, the, the issue about these things is that you can never time it so perfectly. Yeah. Right. You get a chance. It's like, you know, it, it's, it's like a chance. So I, I, maybe five years from now, if I want a bank, there's no IDFC bank available. Who knows? So it's just available. So you do it when you, when you get it and not wait for the best time. Absolutely. Yeah, timing is very difficult. You need to uh, strike it when the deal arrives. As soon as he called you. Uh, uh, okay, for the, for the benefit of the viewers and for the benefit of the market, uh, Rajiv, how do you see um, this merger passing the RBI test? Oh, from RBI's point of view, uh, uh, the various requirements are uh, as follows. Actually, the most important one and one of the driving factors in this conversation and its time um, has to do with uh, our largest shareholder, IBFC Limited, having to reduce its ownership stake right. from its current 54% to 40% by October 2018. Right. That didn't give us very much time. Um, and as I, you know, somewhat lighter vein, despite my extraordinary capabilities, <laughs> I didn't expect for our valuation to re-rate, um, for us to be able to meet this regulatory requirement um, by raising primary capital right. at a much better valuation. Okay. So we would have been facing the prospect of um, 
Um, uh, yeah. uh, 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 we would have been facing the prospect of um, uh, IDFC um, having to sell its stake in the market, um, and that would have led to a significant overhang and depress the stock price. So that's an important uh, uh, RBI regulatory requirement that this will meet. Second yeah. is, um, uh, at the relative valuation that we have negotiated, um, there is no single shareholder um, that will really clause uh, 10%. Yes. Um, the foreign ownership restrictions on the combined entity will also be met, will be well under 50%. Um, IDFC Limited still remains the promoter, promoter of IDFC Bank. So it meets pretty much all the licensing conditions. We, are, we may have to make a couple of adjustments. We are not, and this is an important message, seeking any regulatory dispensation from RBI. Right, right. So what will be the post-merger shareholding look like once this is done? Post-merger, uh, IDFC Bank shareholders will end up owning 72% of the company. Um, capital first shareholders will end up owning about 28% of the company. IDFC Limited um, will be uh, a tad lower than 40, yeah. but will be required to come up to 40. Come up. That's basically what the structure will look like. So that will require uh, capital raising? They, you have to go for a, a capital no, issue? No, you don't have to necessarily. Okay, now uh, let me come to the valuations and the merger ratio. Can you tell us how we have arrived at is it really a win-win deal, or is it slightly tilted in your favor? It's really a win-win deal. Right. Uh, first of all, valuation has been done by professional valuers who are present with respect to boards, and uh, the both boards are really well qualified to think through this and uh, come to uh, um, you know come to the valuation we came to. We eventually came to, uh, but that's more. Uh, but coming back to this valuation front, Capital Force has actually built a, a, a business model uh, which is focused on financing small entrepreneurs, consumers right. on the basis of platform on such a large scale through credit capabilities which are rather unique to build an infrastructure for processing those applications, an infrastructure for collecting those, uh, those monies from the customers, a high quality of assets. When you do all of these things, it's a very difficult package to build. And I think it's probably a, a, a decade. So I think in this process, what IDFC Bank has done has fast forward the retail story by 10 years. And that's a significant value to, 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 significant, uh, to acquire. So in that sense, I think, uh, frankly, Rajiv and the IDFC Bank has done a great job in just fast forwarding the storyline. Uh, I, I think that's where the value is. As far as we are concerned, of course, a banking license fast forwards the story and makes the organization more perennial. So we have value to gain. So I think it was truly win-win by any standards you look at it. Right. Rajiv, what will be the uh, uh, kind of uh, bank that you are looking at five years from now? I mean, uh, given the next uh, one year of adjustment and, you know, the merger process getting through finally, five years from now, what will IDFC Bank look like? This is a question that, uh, okay. that I, I should answer, yeah. but before that, just on the um, uh, valuation, valuation. Case, there's one other point that your viewers should just note that from the perspective of IDFC bank shareholders, uh, uh, there is a control premium that is involved in a merger acquisition such as this. Um, and uh, uh, there are relative benchmarks for those. So to give you a sense, um, the control premium that uh, we negotiated was a modest 10 to 15 percent compared to recent transactions with the average is closer to 17. And uh, the Kotak acquisition of uh, ING Vesha, um, the control premium that was paid was 21.5. On the five year vision, Vedya. Thank you. Uh, well, when we look uh, ahead, uh, we see that uh, the Indian story is still galloping, to say, uh, because even if you're growing at 78% and we get to a 6 or 7 trillion economy by 2027, which is what the Morgan Stanley report talks about. All right. This is a big play still coming at us. What we're seeing in India is this, but what is the real India coming up is this, which no one has acquired, Absolutely. which no one has advantaged. So the way I think about it is that, how do we play in the new India and the new GDP creation yet to, yet to come to us? Correct. And that's a big play. Now, more tactically speaking, or more granularly speaking, we feel consumption will be a very big play in the years to come. 
because people employment is getting created people will need cars people will need homes people will need all sorts of uh, necessities so financing this will be a big place so therefore in my mind uh, retailizing this organization which is the path that uh, you know idfc bank was on in any way uh, in any case uh, that is going to be the big play as far as i'm concerned uh, I, i i think that gives a bank perennially it gives relationships and it gives stability it gives profitability it gives everything now as far as the infrastructure and corporate finance is concerned i must say that is also very important that is important for india it is important for the bank because that play also in india as you see india emerging next 10 years will be a big play we want that but there we i would say i'd like to want to deal with better rated corporates uh, and and projects where we and 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 not really project financing we got to look too far into uh, into spreadsheets and yeah. spreadsheets but more into where we can really see the cash flow so but but that would uh, throw up the challenge of cost of funding i suppose if you are looking at that say see the cost of funding end of the day in a bank will be lesser than cost of funding of an nbfc right in spirit no, you it, you have acquired customers so, you know yes. you have acquired yes. customers but now you need to acquire depositors absolutely so coming so how do you so 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 coming back to that precisely uh, the fact is that uh, <coughs> again picking on the india story india has 30% savings rate so as the indian gdp grows that much more savings is yet to come to the system so we believe that if we put up the necessary branches put up the necessary infrastructure right products savings will come all the new private sector banks and they are small they are not the big boys and they are all growing the retail deposit rates anywhere between 30 to 40, 20 for 25 to 30% how are they growing it means there is a market and i'm sure we will get a good good piece of that market okay But to what extent do you expect uh, uh, deposits to grow at what rate do you see casa ratio going i can tell you what we have experienced so far right. um uh, uh, i had two and a half less than two and a half years of existence uh, with no retail presence no bank yeah. network nothing right we are up to last quarter we up to 3200 crores in casa our target for this quarter is uh, over uh, close to 4500 crores i cannot disclose the actual number right but i can tell you with um, um, without um, uh, violating any <laughs> any norm <laughs> that we are confident about meeting um, our set goals so that gives you a <coughs> sense for the pace at which such a young institution with a incipient uh, network and infrastructure is already beginning to build up um, a savings account and current account franchise when we have an opportunity to actually expand the network i, I fully expect that um, this will only accelerate i'm right them actually i have no doubt that you know they've already built something right and once we scale this up i'm pretty confident this can be done but moving from uh, of course you know one of the uh, research reports says this merger they've called it it's the caption this caption says into a different league okay but don't you think doing banking business is tougher than doing in bfc because you have experience on both sides and you've come back to banking well actually first of all there is no free lunch in india in That's any business whether in infrastructure or you're in banking or anywhere you are there's no easy business but the fact is that uh, an nbfc while it accesses many niche segments and which is very important for india sure. always will have the overhang of having to borrow from wholesale yes. lenders with the banks or mutual funds correct so uh, i would therefore say that when we talk of ease of operation there is probably a glass ceiling the glass ceiling by the way over the years have been going up Correct. but there is some sort of a ceiling of how much an nbfc can grow right i do think that and that time for us is not today maybe that size would have been 80000 crores but at the, some stage i would have felt it therefore uh, uh, there's nothing easy or hard about it 
but we should therefore focus on the opportunity and we should focus on relationships and i think opportunity plus relationship uh, is 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 more in the bank because you get to get many more products around the customer rather than only lending lending absolutely uh, this merger is taking place when some very important trends uh, we notice in the uh, banking and financial sector um, especially the financial services industry. The pace of change is tremendous. We don't notice it unless we bring out headlines. One of them is the way mutual fund industry is growing. You know, IDFC also has got a mutual fund. Uh, the other one being the huge NPAs of public sector banks and therefore their inability to capture the incremental business that is coming, which is again going to NBFCs, to uh, smarter private banks, and to uh, the mutual fund industry. Yeah. Now, in such a scenario, where do you see, what's the vision for the financial services industry? At one end, you have conglomerates, the huge HDFCs and HDFC bank. And at the other end of the spectrum, you have very small players. And in between, you have players which, who are nimble-footed and who are growing. Sorry, uh, this is a slightly longish question to uh, put things in perspective. My question to you, uh, to both of you, uh, you know, are you going to see IDFC bank emerging as an ICICI bank, or are you going to see HDFC twins replicating in IDFC and IDFC? No, no, Rajiv. I'll let Vidya answer, 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 answer that second yeah. part. But just I have two observations, sure. which I've held for a long time, which is the reason why we got the banking license uh, in the first place. And that has to do with the observations you're making on a macro context Mac. today, right? Two more points, uh, people don't uh, focus on it, uh, about the macro situation in financial services. Did you know that 45% of all bank lending outstanding still is only to 300 corporates? That's an absurd situation. It just means there is a huge opportunity for retail growth. That's point number one. Point number two, is that where the banking industry, I believe, historically, has not really succeeded and make uh, big inroads, is penetrating that next layer of retail customer. And this is where Vedya and Capital First have done a tremendous job because the three million active customers that they bring to the table yeah. actually are a customer segment that banks have found it harder to Access. Over to you. No, thank you very much for that. I think you set it up beautifully. See, the um, banking traditionally in India have happened at the top of the pyramid. And of late, let me say for the last five or eight years, banks have made serious efforts of getting even to the bottom of the pyramid. And I must say many banks have done a very good job of it as well. Right. So at Capital First, I can't call ourselves the pioneers of financing at the bottom of the pyramid. But we certainly were one of the significant and let me say, freshest players in that space. And we built a unique niche in, in many a, such areas. Uh, now, uh, what was the earlier question? Yeah, the, the question was, are you going to look at IDFC Bank yeah. becoming an ICAC bank or the twin exactly. HDFC, yeah. HDFC Bank and IDFC and IDFC <laughs> Bank? I'm, I'm coming to that. Now, I'm not looking at any template existing template to say we will be this bank or this bank. Sure. Our template is our own. My template that comes top of my mind is to say how to make a peace of mind bank. A peace of mind bank is to me, at, as a management, I should be able to sleep in peace and not worry about one black swan event coming this quarter from this big account or that big account. I just want to, I, 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 and a peace of mind to a management is peace of mind to the shareholder. Correct. Number two, I do believe that we should be a growth bank because end of the day, if in India we can't grow, then where, where in the world can you grow? Absolutely. There's no doubt about Number it. Number three, we should be able to make returns that makes the organization sustainable year on year on year in decades. So on my mind, these three are important. And finally, but not the least, probably the first, is that how do we create a bank where employees are very happy, very energized, get big jobs, get motivated, they all grow. And that bounce in the step of employees is very important to me. At Capital First, our employees are, are bouncing off the feet all the time for the last seven years. That's important to me. 
So these things play on the mind all the time. It's not, am I going to copy this bank or that bank? That would really distract me. I want to be my own bank. Great. Yeah. So uh, uh, that reminds me, see, the way you have acquired uh, customers and the way uh, retail lending is happening, SME lending is happening, I think the ticket size should, would be as low as uh, 1 lakh or less than 1 lakh, I suppose, in your case. I think uh, financial inclusion in our country has been understood or misunderstood to be just opening accounts. But I think the, re the way retail lending is happening, there is a big opportunity there. But my question is, the risks there. You know, what kind of risks do you perceive? See, today there are millions and millions of entrepreneurs, individuals who want to borrow. They may want to borrow even to uh, fund a printer or a laptop or whatever the case may be, you know, as uh, you must have experienced. You know, the retail uh, uh, lending that you saw when you were in, uh, at ICC Bank and you see now, is there a qualitative difference in terms of assets? There is actually. Uh, it is constantly improving. End of the day, the, the, the small entrepreneur who wanted to buy a laptop or a printer or a, or, or, or a television. Now, if it is a salaried employee, they always had a salary set to show. Uh, entrepreneur never had this source of information. Now, there are two things that have substantially happened, particularly in the last 10 years. Number one, the credit bureau has come which has made people aware. Even today, uh, uh, you know, somebody who's really unorganized sector, he understands credit bureau. Number two, the amount of information that's available through various sources, we all know all the sources, are much more than what, and most of them being digital. Great. So I think these two are actually making enabling banking to such people possible. Now, thirdly, I must say that this is not a risk-free business. This is not lending to a top AAA rated corporate where you can sleep in peace. Right? This is lending to a small entrepreneur and they have their share of defaults. But the really good thing is that A, it's a blue ocean, two, margins are relatively better, and three, and most important, these are customer relationships who would probably thank you for being doing business with them rather than probably a large corporate who does you a favor by giving you your own business. Absolutely.